morning everybody today is the 4th of december so it's time to open up door four of my alvin calendars and today i have got may may is the alexa kit and i'm not quite sure who created the kit but i'll put it down in the description like i've been doing every day and she, her artist was margaret marsh here in australia margaret marsh is an amazing artist so Let's stop now and head over and find out what is behind door number four. Well, here we are. And before I start this, I would, this is the first time Garfield has helped me with doing my videos. He has been very helpful today. And see if you can guess why. Okay, come on, can you? Well, the last three days I've been using this, but today it wouldn't use it. So I asked Garfield would he do it and he kindly said, well, he had to say yes, didn't he? So can you guess what Garfield is doing for me today? He's in the video, but you can just cannot see him. He's doing something very handy that I want it done. I'll show you. Voila! I want to stand this up while I took the photo for the thumbnail and it wouldn't stand up so as I said I put Garfield behind there and he is looking at the tree which I forgot to turn the lights on and he's there complaining so I will move him out of the way oh you good boy isn't he a good boy <laughs> so since it won't stand up by itself I lay it down and as always, I start off with the chocolate one. As you know, it's been a while since breakfast, so I'll wait till the, what's the day the 4th? Let's see. Oh, there, it is staring at me. Door 4. I wish they'd make this, uh, uh, but they can't make them too easy. Otherwise, people would go in the shops. As always, got my trusty little knife. They're always hard to get open. I said earlier good morning, but it's not morning. What this? Can you draw me? I've never noticed that before on the back of it. Can you draw me? Oh, interesting. So we'll get the chocolate out. Here we are. And today, oh, this, oh no, it's the other one. We don't have these in Australia at Christmas time, but England and parts of America, you would have Frosty, the snowman. I'm glad he's not made of snow, because for me, chocolate is much better. Now, I'll put this on the floor and pick it up later. So far, and as we have the car, we have whatever this is going to be, and we have whatever this is going to be. <laughs> but, oh, amazing. I love cars. Okay, day four. Day four. Come on, jump out at me. There's five, that's tomorrow. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's a big one. Here. Yeah. Got it. Use my knife. Use my knife. Come on, knife. And I said, I oh, know it's a knife. This is not exciting, but I think as they go on, get that out. Ah! Come out. Ouch. Oh. It's another piece of 
this. I wonder if this will go together with this or if it's just another part all together. I have no idea. Let me see. Oh, it looks like it goes together. I don't know. It looks like it goes together, doesn't it? Well, I'm not quite sure. We'll just have to see as we go on and see what happens. To get to see this at the end is, I think, the best part. Building them up each day. So that's it. And as always, we have got one of these. And if you've seen the last three days, you know what these are. So this is door number four. And we will see what one we have today. I didn't realise that I actually kept these from before, but I'm glad I did. Because it just adds something extra. I wonder what we've got. I'll close my eyes. Oh, I love this story. The elves in the shoemaker. I love this story. Do you remember how this goes? The Okay. Garfield wants to say hello. He wants to get up and sit there. Good boy. You might get a treat for look helping mum. The elves and the shoemaker. Once there was a famous shoemaker. Lords and ladies loved his beautiful boots. Even kings wore his slippers. But now the shoemaker was old. He had aches and pains from sewing and stitching. No one wanted to buy his shoes or his boots anymore. All day long his shop sent silent and empty. Isn't that sad? Yeah. Archie answered that. The shoemaker stared at his last piece of leather and sighed. After this, I don't know what we will do. We'll worry about it in the morning, said his wife, trying to comfort him as they went to bed. But morning came with a big surprise. There, on the workbench, sat a fantastic pair of brown, brand new shoes. <coughs> the chocolate. Good morning. Everyone admired the shoes in the window. They were sleek and shiny and perfectly stitched. The shoemaker sold them the amount the moment he opened the shop. The next morning came, and with an even bigger surprise, two pair of boots stood on the shoemaker's bench. And what incredible boots they were, with twirly patterns and golden toes. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. Magic overnight. The shoemaker sold them in seconds. Oh my, said a customer. Never have I seen such elegant boots. Heavens, gasped another. Just look at these laces and high heels. The strange shoe magic continued for weeks. Every morning when the shoemaker woke, there, were, there on his bench were more fabulous shoes. Every day they were finer than the last. My oh goodness, he's getting more shoes and more shoes. By the crockies, yeah. They had shiny buckles, twirly ribbons, and pretty bows tied in leather and lace. 
Word spread. The shoemaker is back to his best. People came from far and wide to buy his splendid shoes. Isn't that amazing? All the new shoes. But the shoemaker felt strange about this change of fortune. He knew that his shoes were not really his shoes at all. Let's hide in the workshop tonight, he said to his wife. We'll see who was making all these wonderful new shoes. That night, the, sh the shoe shop door opened with a quiet creak. Two shadows flitted through the silvery moonlight and soft feet pattered across the floor. Ooh, interesting. I wonder what's going on. Two tiny creatures in raggedy clothes sprang onto the workbench. They were giggling and grinning and dancing and singing. Elves, thought the shoemaker. Smiling and sing singing, the elves set to work. Ham hammering heels, stitching leather and making fluffy pom-poms. By the first light of the morning, the latest pair of shoes was finished and the cheery little elves scampered away. There they are, the little elves. The shoemaker gasped and his wife clapped her hands. What magical creatures, she cried. We must repay their kindness, the shoemaker said. But what can we make for an elf? Interesting. For the first time in week, weeks, the, the shoemaker sat at his workbench cutting and stitching leather and cloth. He worked and he worked as day become night. His candle burnt down and his eyes ached in its flickering light. There he's working very hard. I wonder what he's working on. Do you know Garfield? Finally, he was finished. He left what he had made for the elves to find. Those creatures would have given us so many wonderful surprises, he told his wife. Tonight, they'll have a surprise of their own. The elves squealed with joy when they saw the, elf, the shoemaker's gifts. What stunning new suits, they said in delight. Such terrific top hats and tails. Oh, very happy little elves. What do you reckon, Garfi? The elves danced all around the workbench, gleefully singing about their magnificent suits. No. I can't. Oh, the writing on this. What happy little elves are we, no longer workmen shall we be. We look so fine in our new suits, no longer shall we stitch new boots. But look at them singing and dancing in their new suits. The shoemaker and his wife watched the happy elves skip off into the night. Thanks to the kind little creatures, they could live comfortably for the rest of their lives. The shoemaker never made another pair of shoes, but whenever he thought of the elf, he smiled. He hoped they were still singing and dancing somewhere in their fine hand-stitched suits. There they are. They finally retired. The Elf and the Shoemaker was first written down by brothers Jacob and Witherhine Grimm. The Grimm brothers, who lived in Germany around 200 years ago, loved fairy tales. They collected lots of other stories too, including Cinderella and Snow White. The end. I've always loved that story. I, it, it seems it's a, like a magical one. Better than Cinderella. Um, 
Yeah, by the crikey, all right. I don't know why I like this one. It always seems... Little elves are doing a good deed for the shoemaker and in return the shoemaker and his wife did, did something for the elves, which the elves did not expect. I think there's a little story that you do something for someone but you do not expect something in return. But when it does happen, it does feel nice. So that is it for today. I might bring little May out. She's here in the pram. Oh, she's a heavy baby. She is such a heavy baby. And there she is, slowly asleep. She's still, she looks so good in a little out, yellow outfit. I cannot wait until the cooler months where I can start taking them out for a walk because we are in summer now and it is hot. So everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's little video and what's come out of my advent calendar doors. So come back tomorrow to see what's behind, especially in the cars one, to see where we're going next and what story we will bring. And we will say goodbye for today. See you tomorrow. And everybody, have a beautiful day wherever you are in this beautiful world. And we'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.